Hi guys, it's I have so much to tell you and it's hard to even know where to start. It's hard to even know where to begin. Well, this is what I wanted to tell you today. There's so much stuff going on in the world, it's just amazing. You remember how the Lord was talking about Jesus was that as it was in the days of Noah, so it, so shall it be at the coming of the Son of Man. There are still people, if you can believe it, that are screaming and saying, No, these are not the end times. This is not what it is. This is not what's going on. They don't believe that these are the end times. You know what? So much stuff is happening every day. So rapid paced. I, is it because they don't want to believe because ignorance is bliss so they want to accept what's going on today thinking that that's normal that that's just the normal way that it's the new normal is that what they want to think uh you know what but they really need to get in their bible uh, i mean seriously you guys know the stuff that's going on in the world uh you guys know you see the stuff that's going on in the world how people's attitudes are changing how much so much hatred is coming out in the air I mean it's not even unbelievers versus Christians it's not even Muslims versus uh, everybody else it's just the whole thing about you know what I mean it's Christians versus Christians it's like believe what I'm telling you I don't care if the Bible doesn't say it like this because I'm telling you it so believe it you know and or else you know that you're rude and uh you don't want to you don't want to be um loving to other people you're just thinking about yourself you know what but let's stop and let's talk about about what god said in the word i'm going back to genesis 6 11 to 13 it says the earth also was corrupt before god and the earth was filled with violence and God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them from the earth. That was God, God talking to Noah that he's going to destroy the people from the earth. And I mean that was Jesus that said as it was in the days of Noah so it shall be at the coming of the Son of Man as far as the violence goes you guys know everywhere you look everywhere you turn it's violent and uh, that's what's going on in our world it's not like I, w I choose to be gloom and doom today it's just what's going on in the world that there's so many different things guys I you know what I uh, you guys heard a, a while back I, I believe it was last year, middle of the year last year, it, it talked about how they said, Hello Kitty. Everybody knows the kitty cat, Hello Kitty. How Hello Kitty was a little girl. It wasn't a cat at all. The kids were like, what? Yeah, it, it's, they said now, the creator said, it's a little girl. How can it be a little girl with uh, little cat horns and whiskers? How How are they saying that? And and I know you guys already know in the Bible that it talks about that the angels, the angels that got kicked out of heaven with Satan, the angels that got kicked out came down and they were with the women. And then they had these wicked children, these, these wicked children. Anyway, and so in the end, those were what part animal, part... I don't remember. They they were wicked. They, they some were giants, some were animals. That they were freaky, and so I'm like, the freakiness in my mind is trying to take over so much in the world, and the pressure right now is I I believe what they're trying to do is, in order they believe to get the next generation, they have to twist the little kids' minds a little bit more, not like they haven't been doing it already, but seriously. With even Hello Kitty, they were saying that Hello Kitty is uh, not an animal but a person. The kids are like, it's a cat. It's We know it's a cat. They're twisting the little kids. They're twisting them so bad. They're twisting with all this homosexual stuff. Anybody can be mad at me for, for saying it, but I'm saying what God said. It can't be man with man. It's man with woman. 
It can't be woman with woman. It's woman with man. That's the way God created it. If people don't like it, it's like, don't fight with me. Fight with God. You know, I wanted to talk to you about that, too. I, I wanted to talk to you guys. There are so many people these days that do so much that they know is contrary to what it says in the Bible. Now, let me tell you this first. We have to look at the Bible as our guidebook for how to live in this world. And we have to try it all the time to do the best we can. We have to try to copy God and everything uh, to to just go and, and to be uh, to be like God and everything. And so we look as our book is the Bible, is our guidebook, our handbook. And as we look to the Bible as our guidebook and a handbook, we can't erase what we don't like and put in there just what we do like. We have to do the whole thing, the whole way or no way. If we're trusting Jesus, we have to go all out and trust him wholeheartedly with everything. So, I I had it in my mind. People think because they're doing whatever they want to do, whatever seems moral in their mind, as if they don't have, if they don't have a God, they're doing whatever. Even if they do say that Jesus is God, yet they want to do what they want to do. Yes, I am against abortions. Yes, I am against homosexuality. What God is against, I am against. People are doing whatever they want and being rude. And with their mouth, they're cursing. They're saying all these curse words. The Bible clearly tells us, and I, be, I believe it's uh, Psalm 109, 17. I, say, I, believe, I believe that's the verse that it talks about when we're quoting, when we're quoting um, cussing out of our mouth, when we're just letting it go out of our mouth. We're taking blessings from ourselves. And, you know, when I see that, I'm like, people don't understand what they do to themselves. But when they're not following God's ways and they are crashing down with all these sins against God and they're thinking, well, God didn't strike me down to dead today. I guess what I'm doing isn't so bad. I've been doing this for a long time. I'm happy with my whatever mate or whatever, even if you got married. Even if you got married and what the law says is legal, God's not saying it's legal. What counts is what God says. So they think, well, look, I got married, and I'm fine, I'm happy, and I have money, and I'm doing just so good. You know, we have a beautiful house, we have a beautiful home. Nothing happened to me so far. It's like, you know what? God is not approving of it. He is a God of love, yes, but he's a God of justice. There's nobody that's going to be able to get away with anything. They think they're getting away with stuff. I have a neighbor in front who's just stealing garbage services from the garbage company. Her and the other neighbor on the, hook their garbage up together and they're thinking they're getting a free ride, an easy pay half price for garbage. Just put in mind with the neighbor. That's heinous. To me, that's just stealing. No, And plus, they're lying to get that done. So liars will not go to heaven. We know this. It says liars will not go to heaven is what it says in the Bible. People that get away with, uh, they think that they're getting away with stealing. They think they're getting away with uh, talking lies about other people. Or they think they're getting away with uh, fornication. They think they're getting away with, you name the sin. They're, the world's all full of sins today. You, they think nobody's listening. They're, they're dead wrong. God is listening to every word we say. Every word that comes out of our mouth is being recorded. It's being recorded. And then later Jesus is going to listen to each one of those words to judge us. He already knows. The Bible says we're going to be judged by our words. And, and I mean... You know, people, you have to repent. You have to be ready. Because even though God is not slamming you down today and, and, and striking you dead with a lightning bolt, His, His justice is going to come. 
We have to ask him for forgiveness. We have to don't be hanging on the sidelines or don't be hanging on the fence. No, you have to make a choice. Is it going to be one side or is it going to be the on the other side? Go to the side that's truly yours. If you're in the world, stay in the side of the world and don't even fake it. Because what did Jesus say about the ones that just love him so much, just a little bit, just, just such and such amount, and they don't love him wholeheartedly? And they're they're nothing to him. They're they're nothing. If they don't love him wholeheartedly and they're not obeying him and following him, that's no love at all. You have to obey him to the max. And so that I wanted to tell you today. I, I wanted to share that with you. And you know what I, I mean, it's some people I know one gentleman and he's a very smart, very smart gentleman. He loves the Lord. He has money. He's higher up. He owns his own business. He doesn't believe in hell. Jesus talked about hell more than it ta he talked about heaven. It wasn't mentioned less than heaven itself. He talked about hell more than heaven. Jesus did. He, how can somebody not believe that hell exists? You know, they, they have to read their Bible more. They have to rethink. I, I know people who claim that there's not going to be a tribulation. Beautiful people. People that are knowledgeable in the Bible, but only to such an extent that they feel comfortable. If it gets out of their comfort zone, they don't want to believe that it's even there. And that's not right. Some people don't believe that there's ever going to be a tribulation. There's one verse that talks about how we go through trials and tribulations. Uh, this gentleman says that the tribulations we're going through right now is all the tribulation that we're going to have. I, you know, I, it leaves me speechless. I can try to tell him what I know, what I've read in the Bible, but he's older than me, so it holds me back a little bit. I don't want to be disrespectful, disrespectful to elders. I don't want to do that. But I try to show him, but he doesn't want to listen to me. It's by the same thing. I'm younger than him. He doesn't want to hear it. He doesn't want to listen. I I know a woman who thinks that when we get to heaven, all we're going to be doing is looking at Jesus like this. That's it. All day and all night. I praise the Lord Jesus. I want to be with him all the time. I want to do stu stuff with him. I want to dance with him. I want to tell him how thankful I am for what he's done for me. I uh, I just I want to spend quality time throughout eternity with with Jesus, but that's that's not that's not what heaven is. Yeah, heaven is we have a whole bunch of stuff we're going to be doing for the Lord. And so she was wrong on that. And I have another friend who she she told me that if we're not totally perfect by our own means when Jesus comes, we won't be going to heaven. And I'm like, my question is then why did Jesus die on the cross for our sins? He shed his precious, beautiful blood to cleanse us from everything, from all of our sins. No, 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 no. We have to, she thinks. She thinks we have to get clean on our own and get ourselves pure. Okay, if that's the case, then I know I'm not I'm not clean. If Jesus would come day, I'd have to be left because I'm not clean. The only way I'm totally clean is if he would look on the shed covering of his blood over me and see that I'm cleansed all the way and I'm ready to go home because of what he did. It wasn't me. It was he. It's what the Lord Jesus did for me. People have, uh, they're off in different uh, ideas. Their ideology is off the mark of what the Bible says. I, you know, I, I think people need to um, not fight about it. Absolutely no fighting. Don't fight. Jesus doesn't want to come back for a bride that's just the ankle biting other people and gossiping. He doesn't want to hear it. He doesn't want, he knows. He doesn't want us talking to each other about how bad the grocery is. Have you seen what he says? He ripped me off. He did, I asked for four pork chops, and those pork chops that I got looked like it was only three. And it was, yeah, I mean, come on. Don't gossip. Don't talk down other people. We have to get along with others. The Bible tells us clear 
And, you know, I feel bad because I just even mentioned about my neighbor in front. Sin, I guess, you could say, when it's just put into our face, put it put into our face and pushed in there. It does. It's it's the, the fire that comes out in me that they don't love Jesus enough to obey him and obey his word. But I do love my neighbors. The one neighbor, I led her to the Lord. I led her to the Lord. She doesn't want to come over and talk to me anymore. She doesn't. Well, it's all right. That's her decision. The other neighbor just moved in there uh, probably about six or seven months ago. I don't know them. I've waved at them. I've said hi, but I don't know. Them. And, um, you know, I, I'm just saying we have to get along with others. We have to do our best to get along while we're still on this earth. We have to get along and carry on, live each day as best we can, waiting for the Lord's return. And, you know, the, the Bible also tells us to look up, because your redemption draweth nigh, and the coming of the, the Lord is coming, you know. And the, the, our redemption draweth nigh, but it doesn't say, our redemption draweth nigh after we're in the middle... It's like before these things happen, your redemption draweth nigh. Don't remember the exact verse, you guys do. And before these things happen, our redemption draweth. Our our redemption is going to be that we're going to get taken out. Not our redemption cometh after we're already getting beat up and bloodied up. I don't think Jesus wants a bride that's battered, bruised, and beaten, and I, that's, I don't think he does. I can't speak for God, but I don't think he wants a, a bride that's battered, bruised, and beaten. And in no way, shape, or form am I talking about the people that are in prison for their faith. My heart cries for them. My soul goes out to cry for them. I wish I could change it for them, but I can't. I can't. But I don't, I don't think... I don't think it's going to come to a time that that God is going to want all Jesus' bride to be battered, bruised, and beaten. When these things come to pass, look up for your redemption draweth nigh. When these things begin to pass, that's what it is. When these things begin to come to pass, then look up for your redemption draweth nigh. And you know what I was thinking about that too? I was thinking when these things begin to come to pass okay see the, then we'll be taken out I think in my mind this is what I think I think uh, that we are just given such a little bit just a little tiny bit of information about what's going on behind the scenes they don't want us to know and so because of that God knows a hundred percent what's going on he knows how bad it really is he knows how close we are. He knows how close we are till when they want to kill us and they want to harm us. That's why hard thoughts hold. That's why the capture, the capturing away, the catching away. That's why that's going to happen right then. Because God knows exactly when it would get really, really bad for us, and He's going to just take us out at that moment. And the Holy Spirit will be gone. I wanted to talk to you. That, that's what I believe is going to happen. And why do I say that? I say that because God is watching so closely with his eyes. And we know for the eyes of the Lord range throughout the earth to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. And then, so I, I look at that and then I think, do you remember, it was last year sometime, I don't remember exactly when, uh, but there was uh, the Iraqis were, were shooting bombs over at Israel and the bombs were they were getting caught in that uh, in that whatever that what's that Iron Dome the Iron Dome would get they wouldn't get to the people and, and then um, the commanders of those people shooting the bombs at Israel they're like why aren't you shooting them why aren't I tell you exactly where to lay this rocket and where to send it to go and why aren't they getting shot? Why aren't they getting... And then the one guy goes, Look, their God is changing the path of our rockets. 
we're shooting exactly like you told us to do their God is switching the path it's going to different places it's not going and this was last year and I thought how awesome you are Lord God that showed me how faithful he is to the ones he loves that's how faithful and that he would do that and I think that's that's totally awesome and I, I wanted to tell you that today I wanted to leave you with he knows what's going on behind the scenes even we don't when it's getting to the point where there's there's like no way back for us without us getting battered bruised and beaten he's gonna pull us out and I have all faith that he's gonna pull us out I was talking to God yesterday I said Lord God it sounds dumb I told him I know it sounds dumb I said but you see when you want to bless somebody over here if I want to bless somebody I'll tell him God bless you God bless you and I know what that means to me I know how strong that is for me to be praying that the Lord God would bless that person I don't take that just really really lightly I know what the blessings from God are I told him Lord God what do I say to you I how can I I want you to be blessed more than I even have the words to say I don't have a word to put that blessing on you you are the one that I would say to but I can't say for you to bless yourself that doesn't sound right I love you so much Lord I wish there was a way I when we get to heaven guys is the only way we'll be able to talk to God uh, good in a good way we're so we'll have our heavenly mind on our heavenly body right now we're limited we're limited in what we say and, and what we do we're limited but then we won't be but you know what I'm gonna leave that with you right now just for a while I, hopefully I'll get on here again tomorrow and leave you another one but uh, you know what I just wanted to leave you with a little bit today I want to, to hear a little bit of different things but I wanted you to know keep looking up because our redemption draweth not and you know what it's never ever been as late as it is right this moment that you're listening to this he's coming he's coming he died for us he gave himself for us so that we wouldn't have to Jesus did Jesus Christ he died for us so we wouldn't have to to suffer for our sin we won't be here during the tribulation time that's for the unbelievers Oh, I wanted to talk to you about that too. Uh, I, I heard this lady on the radio that she was really she was really going on and on and we have to we have to bless our our Muslim neighbors and we have to oh you know we have to um, show them love and, and we have to pray for our Muslim neighbors and after I, I heard that little bite I stopped I I told the Lord I said Lord God that's hard for me because I don't even know where to begin it's hard for me to pray for somebody who wants me dead the Muslims don't love me their book tells them and teaches them how to hate how to hate uh, non non believers in, in Islam and I, I'm like Lord God I don't have any neighbors that are Muslim I don't know how how could I to come to you I would they'll say they do believe in Jesus but I said Lord God their Jesus that they talk about isn't you it's a Jesus of their own invention in their own mind no, I'm, I'm in a quandary Lord Lord God you would have to teach me I know your word says him that loveth not knoweth not God that I know it's not that that there's a group of people I don't want to love absolutely I want to love everybody I want to love everybody with your love I said, but it's hard for me to have a deep feeling of wanting to love somebody that wants me dead. Their book tells them to kill Christians, which I am one of. Their book tells them to do that. How can I love and pray for people that want me dead? I, I have a hard time. Lord Jesus, I told him, I love you. And I, I just wanted to talk about that it's not that I wish any harm to any Muslim people I want them to come to know the Lord 
Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, our Jesus, the Messiah. I want them to know him like we do. We love him. Lord God, I want to thank you for allowing me to talk to my friends on here. For allowing me the opportunity to talk to you too. Uh, for making the way, Lord Jesus Christ, that I can that I can go to heaven with my prayers. That, Father God, you would even want to just lean down and listen to my prayers. I love you, God. Thank you, Lord. Well, that's what I wanted to tell you today, but I'm going to stop now. But I love you. Bye, guys.